Please welcome Isabel Schiffer, Gateway Excellence Startup Center, University of Cologne. I might have introduced some conformational changes to make it stay. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Isabel. Uh, I'm a scientist by training and I work as a transfer scout at the Gateway Excellence Startup Center of the University of Cologne. And I'm really excited to be here today to introduce to you Procyon Therapeutics. Procyon is a biotech startup with the vision to greatly improve quality of life of patients suffering from heart to treat diseases like cancer or Alzheimer's. And we believe that they deserve the Falling Walls Venture Award because they will revolutionize how we will treat diseases in the future. And with us here today is Liam Chia, he's CEO and co-founder of Procyon, and he is what we can call a true sciencepreneur. About two years ago, he turned his own PhD project into a startup, going from an organic chemist into the field of uh, life sciences. And uh, I'm very happy to have him here today and to be able to introduce him, stage is yours. Steam. Breaking the wall of drugability for cancer and beyond. Slim Chiha, Prozion Therapeutics. Thank you. Do you know of a single family that has not been touched by Alzheimer, heart disease, or cancer? I'm asking you this because these are the number five, number two, and number one leading causes of death globally with an estimated 29.5 million deaths. Now, behind these numbers, and we've heard it, of course, human beings who are not only suffering from the illness itself, but very often also from the aggressive treatment they received before leaving their loved ones behind. Well, we want to change that. We are Prozine, and based on a decade of research, we have developed a radically new approach to fight these diseases. And we do this by introducing a platform of extremely nice Lego-like molecules that are able to unlock previously and so-called undruggable targets that are directly linked to these diseases. And actually, we could already show this by inhibiting um, a former uh, undruggable target for the very first time that is a known fundamental driver of cancer progression. One thing we're very proud of is that the European Commission has selected us for a 2.5 million euro grant, and actually they do this because they recognize the, the breakthrough potential of our innovation. But what makes our innovation so special? Well, it comes back to the very special three-dimensional molecules that you can see here that are able to really copy a helix structure. That's actually a feature displayed by no other molecule, a pharmaceutical molecule on the market currently. And the idea is now that you can use them a little bit like Lego bricks and combine them into potential inhibitors of a very abundant class of protein targets that are specialized in recognizing this helix pattern. And why would these, ta patterns, uh, why would these targets be interesting? Well, first of all, they're extremely abundant, they are undruggable, and they are known to play key roles in cellular malfunctions all linked to these deadly diseases. And so you understand that this innovation can be used in many therapeutic areas, just like in oncology, in our lead program, where we have used our platform to design and develop a first small molecule inhibitor for this fundamental driver of tumor progression. And actually, long story short, we've used this already now in in vivo studies and have conducted mice experiments both in pancreatic cancer and breast cancer and have observed an unprecedented two-in-one or two-fold in vivo effect one, inhibiting metastasis, and two, clearly decreasing primary tumor growth. The idea is now, of course, to take these very interesting results and push them as fast as possible into the clinic. And that's what you can see on this slide. Really bring this project within the next 12 to 18 months into a first-in-man study. But we're also in collaboration in the field of infectious diseases and working on a program against cardiovascular diseases. And the idea is, as you can see here, really build a strong pipeline of differentiated assets, all based on this beautiful platform technology. And for this, to really fulfill this vision, we could already, next to the EIC grant, secure a seed investment by the leading um, deep tech um, investor that you can see here on the slide. And also, concerning our upcoming Series A, we have good news here. We have been now eligible for co-investment of up to 15 million by the European Investment Bank. Allow me to also quickly 
show you the wonderful people behind this company. I'll start with our chief medical officer, Dr. Jürgen Beck, who was previously head of clinical operations at Intermune when they hit the big exit to Rush, but also some ex Medchem expertise, um, virtuosos, I will call them, Dr. Franz von Nussbaum or Professor Rainer Metternich, who are really, I would say, world-leading scientists in this field. Maybe also one sentence about myself. So my background is indeed also in medicinal and organic chemistry, and I've dedicated my last eight years to this project, really spearheading from my PhD up to um, this biotech company as the company CEO. Uh, the entire team that you can see here is extremely motivated to bring our innovation and translate it into clear benefit for a patients' quality of life. And of course, the space that we work in is extremely attractive as these peers in the undruggable space are showing, but I would like to stress out that as a company and as an uh, innovation, we are the only one capable of unlocking this previously undruggable space within the proteome. And as such, we have five granted patents, both EU, Japan, Japan and the uh, US, to uh, defend this first mover position. Our lead program has a radically new mode of action and has a first-class potential, and therefore could really bring <coughs> true game-changing uh, innovation into oncology. With this being said, I would like to thank you for the attention and invite you to join us on this journey to redefine drug ability for cancer and beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's quite an ending. Let's start with Stefan, Frank, then you, and then you. Okay. Um, what will protein folding and the advent of AI, was it uh, mean to your competitive advantage? Four minutes, please. Well, it's, of course, something we try to use to expand our target scope, but we have currently already diagnosed and found some, some targets that we're going for. Um, I can't go too much into the detail, but these targets, as they are undruggable, have uh, not your typical binding pockets, but it's more uh, so-called binding groove. But great question. Frank? Uh, in your presentation here, you, you said, or in the other presentation, that you have more than 25 uh, building blocks of those, these protein-like molecules. And you build them together like Lego bricks. What is the, the final uh, molecular weight of the candidates you showed here? It would be, I would say, Lipinski-esque, so around 600 to 700 Dalton. Yeah. And uh, the library grew, actually, in the time that we gave this. We're now at around 40. These are core structures that and we can learn. And you have then two, two, two of the molecules combined together is then an active component. Exactly. Usually a pentapeptidic. Uh, yeah. So it's two of these building blocks and one non-natural amino acid. Mm -hmm. Next question here, just to your right. Thank you. Yes. Following on from that question, this molecule here is the core it's for the helical structure. Mm -hmm. I think you had one molecule with a nitrogen attachment to it, an amino group. Is it all based on this one structure? No. So the, the design goes back to many variations of this helix fixation. So as I think the key word here is rigidification. And um, from these core structures, come different uh, derivatives, I would say. But there are some spirocyclic, there are some with sync rings, so it's uh, an entire chemical space. Yeah, we have a question here on the third row, please. I'm curious in um, how you access those compounds, given that it's a, presumably a enumeration between different building blocks. Are you using automation or manual synthesis, and what's the throughput like? Yes, great question. So that was actually the, the backbone of the company and, and the platform. You have your library, but clearly also an AI and rational driven approach to choose those best possible combinations for a, certi for a certain target. And these goes uh, through the, I would not name them uh, via the, the stream, but some um, very renowned programs that can do this. Okay, next question by Frank, please. Uh, since this is one class of compounds, what can you tell us about the CMC properties, half-life, all bioavailability, solubility, something like that? So we are, of course, in a small molecule space, and we're going for protein-protein interactions, so you can imagine that the, these are sometimes challenging, but I think the, the target product profile is looking very good. Uh, we are currently running a PK cassette, so I'm, I can't directly say too much about uh, the half-life, but it's, it's looking everywhere um, quite good. Cell permeability is there, admin data are there, and we are still optimizing. That's the, the goal of the current um, 
um, in the of the company, we're still doing a lead optimization till the beginning of uh, January. And you already have some in vivo data? Yes, with the semi-optimized lead. Thank okay. you. Great. We would have time for last. We have a comment. We have a question. Oh my God. Question, is it yes or no? Yeah. Good. Go on. You performed in vivo studies, some insights on the toxicity spectrum? Um, yes or no? Um, no toxic <laughs> uh, uh, um, effects at this stage, at yeah. least. But very good results in terms of food and, and uh, beverage intake of the mice. We want to finish by your comment. Uh, you thank you. Yeah. I thought of a comment just for you. Yes. Um, so Make it nice. Yes. It's twofold. So first of all, you said initially there is no molecules that have helical structures that are actually used. There's some antimicrobials that have helical structure. Um, and to not make it completely negative, uh, this was an absolute, absolutely awesome pitch. And uh, I'm a chemist by training myself, and this is really, really cool. So thanks for that. Thank you. As a little co correction, it's in the small molecule space in a specific helix structure, the polyproline type 2 helix, it's called. I told you we have brains on stage, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're more than you're, welcome. You're, you're done after these four minutes. Last one, right? And you are the last one, <laughs> so huge applause.